Hey yo, and what is up, gang? Thank you for checking out Sledgehammer TV tonight. It is Tuesday, July the 10th, 2018, as we hit the final stop on our way to this weekend's Extreme Rules pay-per-view with tonight's episode of SmackDown Live. And we are here to bring the hammer down on the whole situation like we can only do right here and right now on the newest, fastest rising podcast in all of YouTube iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, and Podbean, baby. You know you love it. It's time for the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, baby. Let's do it. Wrestling fans, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Nick Nightmare. Along with me, as always, is the world's greatest tag team, Thor the Sledgehammer, the wrestling god of thunder, and the official Sledgehammer of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. My little buddy, my most trusted companion, I would never, ever sound as good as I do for you guys without this chrome dome heavyweight champion of microphones. He's Mr. Blue the Snowball. Thank you guys for checking out the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show's SmackDown Live. Live review and reaction show tonight. There's <sighs> a couple of things I want to point out. Before we get into talking about the actual card and the winners and the losers, which is what you guys might be here for, I need to point out a couple of things that I cannot let go. See, tonight's SmackDown Live was a very lazily booked go-home show for Extreme Rules. Lazy as could ever be. It could not, it's like they're not even trying. They're just throwing everybody out there and let's just do whatever. That's what this show seems like to me. However, in the midst of the chaos and the bullshit booking, there was actually some very good wrestling, which at the end of the day is what I tune in for. However, that does not come without a caveat of its own as the WWE is just obsessed obsessed with cutting away from the action. It's okay for us to see people come out to their entrance. We could play the entrance song. We could watch people fucking bullshit and have bad attempts at being really lame comedians. We could bring up dead early 2000 boy bands that are completely fucking irrelevant like NSYNC in the year 2018 when even the people in NSYNC don't want to fucking remember NSYNC anymore. You think Justin Timberlake gives a shit about NSYNC? Why are we talking about this on SmackDown Live? And and you give it to Kane. Kane, the big red monster. The devil's favorite demon. All these evil, demonic, twisted connotations to a man that has m almost murdered Jim Ross and has attacked Daniel Bryan and has done many vicious and vile things. He's sitting there throwing out one-liners with a punchline is about 20 years too old. I'm not supposed to say anything about that, right? I'm supposed to just sit back and enjoy it, right? The WWE sucks at doing comedy. We thought that last night. I didn't even bring that point up last night because it's obvious. It's as clear as, as writing on a newspaper. You could read it clear as day. They suck at comedy. They are actually worse at comedy than they are at booking wrestling shows. And goddamn, that means it's really bad. It's really bad. You want to waste my time tonight? You want to waste WWE money? You want to waste WWE television time? And you want to waste an entire division of females by bringing back a jerk-off like James Ellsworth? Since he has come back, the women's division is not even focused on the women's championship. We're playing games with James Ellsworth. Why is Asuka being booked against James Ellsworth? Are the other girls really just not up to par with Asuka that they feel like they have no choice but to put her in there against somebody the fans might 
might deem capable? Do you deem James Ellsworth a capable competitor against Asuka? Nobody does. If you have a quarter of a brain and you're drooling out your mouth and you're watching wrestling, you know that Asuka is 110 times more talented, stronger, and probably better than a James Ellsworth ever will be on his best day. Asuka right now is probably wishing and and just regretting even coming here. She's wishing that she was back home in Japan right now, I guarantee you. Where she was actually in the ring wrestling women who can wrestle, kicking heads off. Breaking bones, wrapping up submissions, being a Japanese buzzsaw. Now she's running around the ring, playing fucking duck duck goose with James Ellsworth again. You got the the ring surrounded by women, but Ellsworth is still getting away. Becky Lynch has got to go grab him up and bring him back. Oscar standing in the ring doing nothing. That's what she came to SmackDown Live for, to stand in the ring and do absolutely nothing and watch some idiot that looks like a human worm run around the ring like a jerk off. And then the girls all start fighting on the outside like they give a shit about anybody else that's out there. There's no storylines. There's nothing going on. Who gave a shit? This is a terrible, terrible use of Asuka. And the fact that James Ellsworth is the centerpiece of the women's division, once again, just makes you guys know the WWE doesn't give a shit about a woman's evolution. The woman's revolution died. It died. As soon as Stephanie McMahon put her grimy little hands on it. This revolution began in NXT and it came to the main roster and died a quick and painful death. And now we are stuck with a James Ellsworth. And now he's going to be suspended in a shock cage at Extreme Rules above the ring while Asuka takes on Carmella. Why do we need a gimmick for this match? It's Extreme Rules. Is that an Extreme Rules match? Having somebody hanging from above the cage? That's so extreme. They literally are turning Carmella into the female version of Enzo and Cass. <laughs> I mean, it's almost the same exact thing going on here. I, I, I can't. I can't deal with it. I want to also point out to you tonight that tonight's main event, as good as the action was, whatever we were allowed to see, was really hyping a Nostalgia Act Tag Team Championship match, which doesn't make sense and nobody gives a shit about, and a six-man tag team match that was made apparently this morning by General Manager Paige based off of what happened last week. It took her a whole week to decide what to do about it, and she enlightened the world that Sanity is going to be taking on the New Day during the pre-show in a tables match. Woo! Good for you guys. You're taking the biggest thing that has come from NXT in a long time, something that actually can generate interest and can be interesting and can be something special, and you've put them on the pre-show in their first pay-per-view encounter. Bravo. That's a great move. Good for you, Sanity. I'm glad you are collecting paychecks and are happy in your personal life when you're being pushed down the card. In probably one of maybe only three actual extreme matches that are being booked for this fucking pay-per-view, which we will be talking about later on this week, and it's not even going to be on the main card. Absolutely ridiculous. And then during this match, which is the main event for the evening, you want to have an inset ad showing us what happened last night in order to promote the single most uninteresting match the WWE has ever booked. Nobody gives a shit about a match for bragging rights. Bragging rights. Between Roman Reigns and Boring Trashley. Nobody wants to see it. Nobody cares. And you want to take time away from a main event in a tag team matchup that kind of unnecessary but was actually going on very well and it was it was coming along nicely and the action in the ring was going was going pretty well and then you want to cut to this and i got to hear roman reigns' voice and i got to see bobby lashley's lifeless eyes and i got to hear even the smackdown 
broadcast team when we come back from that talk about oh they're going up for bragging rights at extreme rules who cares we didn't care last night we don't care tonight raw had its absolute worst ratings ever in the modern era and they will still not learn their lesson when your main focus is the people we don't want to see we're not going to want to watch your show it's getting worse and worse every week SmackDown Live, at least we get to see some action in the ring. The show itself sucked. The show sucked. It was as lazy as it could have ever been. Ten man tags. A singles match that made no sense that turned into a tag team match that should have been what the match was to begin with. And a bunch of other nonsense that really doesn't make sense. But when the bell rang, these guys brought it and and kudos to them because every match tonight with the exception of Asuka and Ellsworth, was actually very good. Especially for what we've been getting lately from the WWE. Tonight's main event, we've seen for the first time ever. They want to say first time ever, but I don't even remember listening that closely to hear if they mentioned it. But tonight we saw for the first time ever Daniel Bryan versus Eric Young. That's a match I would love to see as a long-term singles program. Just the connection these guys had and and the chemistry they had in the ring tonight. You could see that would be a fantastic feud. These guys would play off each other so well. And I think it would be great. But we're not going to get that. We're not going to get that at all. So don't get your hopes up. It was great to see Andrade Cien Almas back in action. We've been waiting for weeks to even see if he was alive again. If it wasn't for Zelina Vega being all over social media. Pumping up El Idolo. We wouldn't even know he was alive. Until tonight. And they want to have a match with Sin Cara. They are finally going to have some sort of a confrontation after they had this, like, almost two months ago little spat in the back because they used to be buddies. Now we're going to revisit that. Andrade Cien Almas is finally going to have this match. Sin Cara might get his revenge, and we go right to commercial. Now it was the picture-in-picture commercial, and again, at first I was all right with it, but at this point, they're, it, it's just very distracting. And when I'm watching the small picture, and I'm watching the wrestling match go on, and I see them do the tranquilo pose, and I see a lot of great stuff going on, it just makes me wonder why they're doing this in the first place. And they shouldn't be cutting during a match like that. They shouldn't be going to commercial at all. This airtime is absolutely crucial for a new and -and up-and-coming superstar, especially to the new viewers at home. And instead of using this airtime to show me Burger King, Budweiser fucking cheeseburgers, and Todd Chrisley and his family, and all these ridiculous fucking ads we gotta see, why don't you allow the announce team to do their job? Isn't this their job? To give us information about Almas. Give us information about the feud. Put these guys over to the people at home. Let us see what these guys can bring to the table. And if they would have actually allowed this match to play out in its entirety to the home audience, I think everybody would be having a much higher appreciation for Andrade Cien Almas. Because when you do things like that, it makes it seem like the WWE doesn't even give a shit about you. You're not more important than playing an ad right now. So we're going to throw the ads in. Doesn't matter that you're doing some of the best shit you've done since you've come up to the main roster. Sin Cara actually looking like a professional wrestler in there with somebody he was comfortable with. And this was a very, very good match but ruined for me by being interrupted and distracted by the audio of commercials. Absolutely ridiculous. It has to stop. It has to stop. The advertisements are out of control. The inset ads for the pay-per-view during these shows is another thing that's just absolutely driving me batshit crazy. Especially when when you want to show one and then about 30 to 45 seconds later, go to commercial break. There is no reason why you need to be Uh, hyping extreme rules during a WWE show because once again, isn't that the announcer's job? Once upon a time, there were no hype packages like that being played while action was going on. You had guys like Jim Ross and you had guys like The King selling the pay-per-view all night long, telling us the importance of every single match, why each competitor was doing what they were doing, getting us in the heads of the professional wrestlers, making us have an emotional connection 
because they were connected. They were invested. What we got now is just a bunch of guys shilling us merchandise, asking us to buy the network, pleading with us to make sure that you join. I mean, that's essentially, that's, that's what I do. But when you already have a fan base of almost a billion people, I don't think you need to sell that hard. If you do your job, that's your job is to make the pay-per-view interesting. You want to make matches that people want to see. You want to build it up as an intriguing thing. A can't-miss event. If you did this properly and you booked the lead-in to a pay-per-view correctly, you wouldn't need 30-second inset advertisements showing us anything we might have missed yesterday. Because everybody would have watched. Nobody would have missed it. You didn't see this shit going on during the Attitude Era. You didn't see this shit going on during the early 2000s. You think you would have seen John Cena's match in the main event of a SmackDown Live get interrupted by an inset ad promoting an upcoming Extreme Rules pay-per-view? I don't think so. Absolutely terrible. Those are just some of the things I needed to get off my chest because it's it's just become an absolute regular thing on the show to complain about the same things over and over and over again. And it's just making me so tired of, of waiting for the turn. I'm sitting here patiently waiting for things to get good and we get Daniel Bryan back and instead of getting him in meaningful storylines because of contract negotiations or whatever the case may be, we're getting the reunification of Team Hell No and I... Say, hell no. I don't want to fucking see it. I'm not interested. I was mildly interested in The Miz's performance tonight as we kicked off the show tonight with Miz TV. When The Miz has the microphone and Daniel Bryan is within his eye gaze, this man is just on another level. He was absolutely getting at Daniel Bryan, making Daniel Bryan want to punch him in the face even more. But this whole entire segment, like I brought up at the beginning of the show, was ruined with in-sync jokes and poor attempts at really bad comedy from a guy on the roster that should not be doing comedy at all. I don't care that he's back in Team Hell No. It doesn't make him an appealing baby face that he could be dropping one-liners. It's awful. It's absolutely cringe. And I wanted it to... I wanted it to stop immediately, but it didn't. This whole segment was to hype their match with the Bludgeon Brothers. Obviously, Team Hell No. Did you really give a shit? This whole entire opening segment was a copy-paste from last night. Only instead of a singles angle, it was a tag team angle. And we had the Bludgeon Brothers come out. And we had the New Day come out. And next thing you know, everybody's beating up everybody. And as soon as you could say, Paige, she made the announcement we all knew was coming. And this was going to be the 10-man tag team match main event. It was very predictable. I already seen it. as I just don't understand what the hell sanity has to do with anything going on between Team Hell No and the Bludgeon Brothers. Now, they did have a promo later on in the evening where they said something along the lines of, well, you know, you're from the past and we are now. And we're here to bring chaos. We don't care who you are, blah, blah, blah. Which I guess somewhat kind of made it made sense, but it would have been nicer to have seen that before they hit the ring and attacked, you know, just make that general, we're here to destroy everybody. We don't care if your team hell no, this and that. And then they can come out and cause chaos and it would have made a little bit more sense, but... I just I didn't really care for it at the beginning. However, like we like I said, we did get a good main event out of it in the end. We did have announced earlier today AJ Styles going one on one against Shinsuke Nakamura, and I just couldn't make sense of it at all. Not like we haven't seen this match about seventeen thousand times this year already, and it made no sense as to why they would be fighting again. Their beef was supposedly squashed. This is just a randomly put together match. For the sake of having them fight. Now you have Rusev come out to do commentary. Which was okay, I guess. And we all knew what was coming. This match was going to have a fuck finish. As it did, Rusev would come in and interfere after Aiden English accidentally gets kicked with a Kinshasa to the face. And then Rusev would get 
Shinsuke Nakamura disqualified. AJ Styles wins the singles match, only to have Paige come out and turn it into a tag team match. I guess the only move Paige has in her back pocket is to do the Teddy Long special and make tag team matches out of everything. Because that's seemingly the only thing she's there to do. Absolutely ridiculous. So then we would have this tag team match, and this tag team match was just fine. Jeff Hardy came out to make the save for AJ Styles. He would be his tag team partner, and we had Styles and Hardy versus Nakamura and Rusev. This match did not go the way I anticipated at all, and I will be the first one to tell you that I think Jeff Hardy is a lot more injured than he's letting on. He just seems to be missing a step. I don't know if maybe it's his age catching up with him. Maybe he needs to not wrestle so regularly. Maybe go to a little bit more of a part-time schedule. Give your body time to heal or just start to wind down some of that really extreme flippy twisty shit. I know that's what he's known for but there comes a time where you have to worry about your health and and if you want to continue to do what you're doing you have to make adjustments and I think that time has come because Jeff Hardy just seems to be about a half step off in the last couple of times I've gotten to see him wrestle and I don't understand why that is but other than that this match like I said was okay it would end with a machka kick to the face of the United States champion and Rusev would get the pin Jeff Hardy would get the loss in this scenario, which makes me believe that he will probably retain his United States Championship when he goes up against Shinsuke Nakamura. And then AJ Styles, conversely, is going up against, excuse me, Rusev at Extreme Rules. And I expect the same to happen there. I don't think the WWE is going to put the title on Rusev. Vince McMahon is extremely is extraordinarily happy with AJ Styles as the WWE champion and everything he's bringing to the game. So I don't think AJ Styles is losing that strap anytime before SummerSlam or at least until he has somebody viable to lose it against, which is absolutely nobody right now, if we're being honest. But Rusev and Shinsuke win this tag team encounter. James Ellsworth was in the back getting ready for his match with Asuka. Carmella wants... Ellsworth to beat beat her in the worst way. And I want Carmella to leave SmackDown Live in the worst way. I want this whole entire segment to be killed and just forgotten. This is what ruined Carmella for me in the first place. And then when James Ellsworth was taken out of the equation, she actually returned back to a little bit more of something I could deal with. But then she became the moonwalking, trash talking, Mella is money with the money in the bank. And it just... Uh, with the cash in of the money in the bank, and it's just gotten worse from there, hasn't it? Or am I just being crazy? I do not enjoy Carmella, especially when you add James Ellsworth. Then you have this lumberjack match. They're calling it a lumberjack match. They went out of their way before on multiple occasions when they have the woman surrounding the ring to call it a lumberjill match. I guess we're not doing that anymore because of, you know, equality and whatever. A lumberjack is a lumberjack. You don't need to make... A differentiation between the two with names, I guess. I don't know. Didn't really bother me too much. It's just something that I happened to notice that they were not calling them Lumberjills. The Lumberjacks for tonight's matchup included Becky Lynch, Naomi, Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, Billy Kay, Peyton Royce, Lana, and Carmella, which is the entire women's division with the exception of Tamina. Noticeably absent. Just again, something I noticed doesn't probably really mean much. This whole match was ridiculous as Ellsworth just kept trying to escape, running around the ring until finally Becky Lynch would get him back into the ring. Asuka would hit a crossbody onto the group of the Lumberjacks. Carmella would hand James Ellsworth a spray bottle, but Asuka would hit Ellsworth into Carmella and then would lock on the Asuka lock for the win, making the little worm tap out. And I hope this is the end of all of this. At Extreme Rules. I don't want to see this anymore. Asuka has got to win. This match would truly end. Um, after the finish. Carmella would spray Asuka in the face. With whatever the hell was. Uh, I'm sorry. Ellsworth sprayed Asuka in the eyes. With whatever was in the bottle. Who cares. Really. This was just probably the absolute worst wrestling match. I've ever seen. Negative five stars. Meltzer wants to give it a half a star. Good for you. I'm going the opposite direction. I'm taking away stars from her future matchups because this whole entire feud with Asuka has just been so bad. Every single thing just in the negative for me. Nothing good at all come out of this. 
They cut to backstage where they got Team Hell No and The New Day trying to come up with a game plan. Daniel Bryan wants to pick a body part and chop them down. Kane wants to set everybody on fire. Big E stopped them with from their yes, no bullshit. And apparently united the team. He wanted to know if Kane was with them. This is just all overly scripted bullshit. Again, with the in sync quotes. Who cares? It's absolute waste of my time. If there wasn't action going on in the ring, this show sucked. Because every time we have to hear the writing from this fucking creative team, I just want to crawl in a hole and die. Really. We go back to Carmella and Ellsworth because God forbid we we don't see them again after we just had to stomach all that shit and Carmella was all pissed off apparently at Ellsworth for losing the match. This is where they would find out that Ellsworth is going to be hung from a cage, a shark cage above the ring as he tried to get a kiss from General Manager Page. This whole thing, again, nothing but cringe. I couldn't stand it. Andrade Cien Almas with Selena Vega came out there, defeated Sin Cara in what was an absolutely great match. I want to see them go at it again. This was not given any respect, and it should have been featured in a much greater capacity. Sin Cara was in control early and hit a suicide dive to the floor. Almas quickly took over and slowed the pace down. Sin Cara would hit a moonsault off the middle rope. Sin Cara then dropped back to the floor and hit a plancha. Into a Huracun Rana. Onto Andrade Cien Almas. I hate. Can I just pause for a second? I get these results. These written results. From a website that I will not name. And I will just go on record to say that. I hate to read match descriptions. Because the written descriptions suck as bad as my delivery of the written descriptions. It's just absolutely horrible. The match was great. Me reading the moves that they executed is going to do it no justice. Try to go back and watch that match. If you missed anything at all, go watch Sin Cara versus Almas from SmackDown Live on July the 10th. It was a pretty good match. It should have been given more time and attention, like I said. This match, Almas would win with those running knees. Took off like a rocket from one corner into the next, executing the double knees into the chest of Sin Cara and wrapped him up for the 1-2-3. I thought he was going to win with a hammerlock DDT. I love that move. I think the double knees is a little bit underwhelming as a finishing maneuver. It's a signature maneuver to me, but um, we'll see where they go with that and if they give them anything else. After that, we got Team Hell No and the New Day defeated by... I'm sorry, defeating. See what I mean? I'm just reading this wrong. Team Hell No and the New Day defeated the Bludgeon Brothers and Sanity, which I'm not too happy with. I don't think Sanity should be taking losses right now. At the very least, you know, this match should have ended in a no contest. Maybe it just got so out of control that the referee has to throw it out. We're building up to extreme rules. Why not have it go to the extreme? Make it end in a crazy melee. So that people would have interest in getting to see the pay-per-view because there was no finality to that match. So both of the storylines that were being pushed in that match would effectively have a cliffhanger. Because there was nothing final about the match. But instead, we get a victory for the good guys. Nice and clean. Daniel Bryan pins Eric Young in the middle of the ring to finish off this SmackDown Live. And then we get a ridiculous segment to close the show where Daniel Bryan and Kane are at the top of the ramp. Daniel Bryan's trying to make Kane's pyro go off. Took him three tries to do it. And then they did it together and it fucking went off. And I didn't care. I didn't care. Like I said, if there was no wrestling happening, this show was worthless. Absolutely worthless. It did nothing to me to gain interest or get me any more excited for Extreme Rules than I was 24 hours ago, which was absolutely zero. So we were at 24 hours ago from right now, let's see what time is it. It is 10.59 p.m. That means we were right in the middle of Monday Night Raw's main event, which was actually pretty good. But after that main event was over, I cannot care less about Extreme Rules. I will fill you in more 
on my feelings about Extreme Rules on this weekend's upcoming preview and prediction show, which will be dropping Friday morning. As usual, don't forget to be here to check it out so you can see what I think is going to happen on what I feel is one of the most overbooked B-level pay-per-views in the history of B-level pay-per-views. Ten matches? Ten matches for Extreme Rules. Terrible. The co branding thing's got to stop. We will talk more about that as well as the weekend comes up. Make sure you hit that fucking subscribe button right now and then ring that notification bell to become a part of the Sledgehammer Club and you will not miss a thing because you will be notified each and every time an episode just like this one drops and we bring the hammer down on something in this world and you will not miss it. All you have to do, ring that notification bell and be sure that you are one of the hundreds that know that when you want your wrestling news and your wrestling reviews and reactions unfiltered, unsugar-coated, and absolutely ruthless, this is the place to be. And that place is Sledgehammer TV. Available only on YouTube.com, but to all of my audio friends, available on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, and Podbean. If you are listening to this show and you have not checked us out on YouTube yet, what are you waiting for? Come over and join the club. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. And then, each and every one of you, raise your sledgehammers high at home and bash that thumb. That thumb that is pointed up. Especially if you enjoyed it, enjoyed today's show. Not enjoyed it. I think I'm spending too much time with my six-year-old daughter. I'm starting to talk like her. <laughs> if you enjoyed today's show, smash that thumbs up. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't hit that thumb too hard. We don't want you to hurt yourself. And of course, make sure you share this video with each and every one of your wrestling buddies all over the wrestling world. Especially if you know that just like me, they thought tonight's SmackDown Live was kind of dead. So make sure that they come on over and subscribe as well. Thank you guys all so very much for being with us again tonight for this review. God! This is one of those weeks where I watch wrestling, WWE wrestling specifically, and it makes me dislike wrestling. It makes me hate the company. It makes me somewhat embarrassed of being a wrestling fan, which is probably... One of the worst offenses you could do. They'll have a lot of making up to do with Extreme Rules. And I don't expect them to make up a goddamn thing. They're only going to make things worse. Like I said, make sure you're here with us for our preview and predictions this weekend. And all things Extreme Rules all weekend long. Right here on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. My name is Nick Nightmare. This is Thor the Sledgehammer, the wrestling god of thunder and the official Sledgehammer of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, being accompanied to the ring by the world heavyweight champion of all the microphones in the whole entire free world, Mr. Blue the Snowball. This has been the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show's SmackDown Live Review for July the 10th, 2018 thank you all once again so very much i love you with each and every fiber of my wrestling being that my friends is going to do it and we are out of here and we will see you next time right here on sledge hammer tv